Hello, everybody. Sensei Matt here for another Black Belt class. And uh, happy to have you here. We're going to be covering a few different things today. And uh, as usual, I'll ask, I'll ask you to do your warm up on your own. We don't have to spend the time in this video uh, with you doing your warm up with me because you know how to do it. As a Black Belt by now, you should be uh, self motivated to do your own training, keep up your own fitness levels to a high degree. And uh, in classes, you're going to be doing uh, planks, you're going to be doing V sits, that's an abdominal exercise, and you'll be doing a bunch of other things. So make sure you keep up your own fitness routine, whether you're doing it in your class, and of course, doing it at home as well. But we're going to get right into the, the material you're going to be learning in class, and we're going to start off by doing a bow. Ready? Give me a focused position and a bow as respect, and then start class with Please teach us sensei, very good. Even though we're on video, still think of it as a great learning environment and as an opportunity to pick up some new skills. So we're gonna start off today with San Chin Kata. San Chin is spelled S-A-N-C-H-I-N. And it's one of the Ishinru Katas that originally came from the Goju-ru karate system. This is one of the foundational katas in Goju-ru because it teaches a lot of the movements, the fundamental blocks and punches and stance and, and breathing, but in a slow controlled way, which also is actually muscle building, muscle tensing, and uh, a way to uh, be aware of your muscle uh, dynamics as you're doing the kata. It's a relatively short kata. It only has three steps forward and a couple of steps back. It's uh, uh, got a limited number of moves. And it's not something that we teach to the younger kids right away, especially not with full power, but eventually you wanna be able to do it with tension, with hard breathing, and uh, really work it out as a, as a strong dynamic kata. Uh, hundreds of years ago in Okinawa in Japan, they didn't have the weightlifting machines or the knowledge of, of weightlifting the same way we do now. So the uh, Japanese and Okinawan people would do tension exercises, breathing and tension to build up muscle strength. So you'll see that in this kata, that's one of the reasons for doing it. It's usually a kata that's taught either just before black belt level or at black belt level. So uh, you should have a good working knowledge of it uh, as a black belt. Your senseis will be watching you as you do it in classes to make sure you're doing all the moves correctly and to give you some fine points on the details of it. Now for today, uh, I'm just gonna be doing it step by step and we're gonna focus just on the movements themselves, not the tension, not the hard breathing, but I want you to get the pattern of movements down, which you'll get pretty quickly. So we start from an attention position. Oh, you know what, before we start, I just want you to realize that the Nahanchi stance is something you need to be aware of. Nahanchi stance has the feet like a Saison stance, one in front of the other, but instead of the feet pointing straight ahead, you turn the toes in and push the heels out. So it's an angled in stance. Some people say it's a combination of Nahanchi stance and Saison stance, and that's one way to look at it. And if I go on this line here, my it's a little hard to see from that angle, but the toes of my back foot are just behind the heel of my front foot. So it's not a very long stance. It's a short stance, similar to a Saison stance, but with the feet angled in. So that's the kata we're gonna be working as we do these movements. That's the stance we're gonna be working with. So I'm gonna to try to get a good angle here on the camera so you can see it well. There we go, that looks good. And like I said, it's only got a few steps forward and, and a two steps back. So let's just do the stepping first. You'll start in a ready position, hands on the side or hands down. And the first step is going to be with your right foot forward, which is a little different than many of the other katas you've been doing. Most of the other katas, you're stepping with your left foot forward first. Now we're gonna step with the right foot. Right now the feet are parallel, but as we circle step in, we're gonna get into Nahanchi stance by pushing those heels out. I should have worn pants that were a little bit higher up so you can see my heels better, but they're angled out this way. All right, so that's the first step with the right foot forward. Second step, in and circle, left foot forward. And tightening up the stance by bending the knees, tightening the toes on the ground, squeezing the heels in together, and tightening your thighs and your abdominal muscles to make it strong on the lower body. 
Third step, forward now, so you end up with the right foot forward. Now circle back with the right foot, and then circle back with the left foot. And then step up, feet together, and you finish the kata from that position. So it's only three steps forward, two steps back, and the uh, right foot is your first one to begin. So we begin the kata with a normal beginning as we do the other Ishinru katas, Yasme, Kyutsuke, great. Hands up for the salutation kata, Sanchin. Hands come down and then step to the side, ready position. So now with the right foot stepping forward, pigeon toeing the feet, turning them in, tightening the muscles of the legs, take a deep inhale, and then the arms make a double outside block. Now there'll be a strong exhale with tightening of the muscles and we'll get to that in a minute uh, or actually in the next video. But for this week, we're gonna be just focusing on the movements. So you have your right foot forward and you did a double outside block, similar to su and su kata, if you know that one. Now, bring your left hand in. And in this case, you're gonna turn it so the palm is up. And it's going to be a full twisting punch that goes out. Twist the hand over, aiming with the top two knuckles. This is the Gojuru style of punching. And since this kata comes from Gojuru, we're using some of the Gojuru technique. So after we do the straight punch, bring your right hand in and do a small outside block with tension. And then a bigger block, like a side block with tension as well. So let's do those first moves again from a ready position. Right foot forward, sun chin stance, double outside blocks. Bring the left hand in, punch out slowly with a full twist. Still aim with the top two knuckles. Then bring the right arm in just about to the center line of your body and then pull it out to the side again. And now bring the left hand out for a full block. So you could call this a small block and this a big block. Now the next move is to step forward with your left foot. Step in, chamber up your right hand, chamber it up nice and high and tight with the palm facing up. And now extend the arm out with a punch, twisting it over. Here's that small block and here's the big block. Third step forward, same thing. Breathe in as you wind up. The exhale will be on the punch, which will be slow. Small block, big block. Now on the third step, stay in place and you're gonna do the same pattern again, this time starting with the right hand. Bring it in, right hand, left hand, right hand, good. And now you do it one more time, starting with the left, but we only do the first move and the second move. And from here, bring both arms down in front with the hands back to back, elbows bent a little bit, and you're going to pull as if you're opening a sliding door that's stuck or an elevator door, and you're stopping it from closing, you're pulling it apart, and you're closing the hands into a fist as you do it. Good, now bring the arms back, both at the same time, palms up, open the hands up, fingers extended for the spear hand strike, double spear hand strike, right to the lower abdominal area. Turn the hands over, close the hands into a fist, and pull. Bring it back, second time with the stabs, with the Spear hand strikes, turn and pull. And this is all done slow motion if you haven't caught this by now. Breathe it in again. And the third time, the spear hands go out, turn and pull. Now, put your right hand on top and both palms facing up. So your wrists are touching, but your right palm's on top. Step back. So we're in a left foot forward stance now. You're going to lift your left hand up and go over your head and back to your side. Your right hand is going to make a circle lower and come up to your shoulder. And that'll happen at the same time. I'm going to work on this with you in just a moment. 
but let's just get the idea of it right now. So your right palm should be up, left palm down. And now extend out halfway, all the way, aiming to the chin with the upper hand and the solar plexus with the other hand. Now put your right hand, uh, sorry, left hand on top of the second one, circle back with the left foot, come down with the left hand, come up with the right hand, circle them around to your sides, and then do the double palm strike to the chin and to the solar plexus, halfway extended, fully extended. Then step up, feet together, hands come down with an exhale, exhale, exhale. Then the attention position and a bow. So there's a lot to it and you can play this part of the video back a couple of times to go through those moves step by step. I'm gonna do it with you once again and I'll, we'll do it sideways so you can see some of those movements. But uh, I want you to try this double circle block a couple of times first. If it's easier, do it mirror image with me so that uh, you don't have to worry about what's right or what's left. So I'm gonna put this hand on top of the other one. Wrists are palms up and the wrists are touching together. Now the hand that's on top is going to come into the body and start going down. So it's gonna do this in and down, in and down. And when it does that, it's gonna to come to the side of your body. And at this point, just turn your hand so the palm is forward and then circle it up to your shoulder. Let's do that again. Come in towards your body. It's sweeping and covering your lower body and groin area. Then the palm is turning and then it comes up to your shoulder here. Good. The other hand makes a, a circling motion blocking the face and comes back around to your hip. It's not way high over your head, just, just face level and around. So when both of these hands go together, it's really covering the entire body and getting in position for the double palm strikes. Let's do it with the other hand on top. So the hand on top comes in towards you and covers, you see how it's like a scoop in front of the body, it scoops. And then when it gets to the side of the body, the palm turns and the elbow is your pivot as the hand comes up to your shoulder. Now the other hand circles around and comes back. All right, again, this hand on top, in and down, other hand up. When you get about to the halfway point, turn this palm, turn it so the palm's forward, circle around and get all the way to here. So the hands will be back at your sides this way, back at your sides this way. So two circles are happening at the same time. Now, if you're just learning this kata for the first time and you're confused by this, hey, join the club because this is not an easy move and it takes people a few times of doing it, uh, even with the instructor's help to get it exactly right. Even if you're just getting the idea of it from the video and then you're getting some more direct instruction uh, from the senseis uh, in the class, that's fine. But uh, don't be frustrated if you're not getting it exactly right. All right, here we go. We're gonna do the kata again, this time going forward here. So you'll see it from a profile and you can follow with me. Yadamek, Yitsuke, Rei, Hajime, Kana, Sanchin. Ready position. Now, right foot forward, Sanchin stance, arms up, double outside block. Wind up your left hand. Punch it out with a full twist. Small block with the right, big block with the left. Step. Bring the right hand back. Punch the right hand out. Small block with the left, big block with the right. Step. Left hand winds up, full twist on the punch. Remember, it's still the top two knuckles that you're punching with. Small block. Big block. Now stay in place. Wind up your right hand. Punch. Small block. Big block. And one more time. We do two out of these three moves on this last one. Punch. Small block. Both hands out back to back. Pull and close. 
Bring both hands back in, high and tight. Scoot your hands out, double, both at the same time, turn them over, pull and close. Bring it back. Scoot your hands again, second time, turn and pull. Back, third time, stab, turn and pull. Now right hand goes on top first and step back with your right foot. So now the right hand comes down, left hand comes around to your side. Double palm strike out, face level and solar plexus level. First push is about halfway, then the rest of the way. Now left hand on top. Back step with your left leg. Here's your circle, left hand down and up. And now palm strike face and solar plexus halfway and then fully extend it. And now step up, feet together, hands down with a bow, and a little bit of breathing, and you finish that way. So I hope that this is helpful for you. Again, you're not gonna be able to get all the nuances of San Chin Kata just by uh, watching it on video, but you'll get the idea of it. And if you get the idea of the stepping, the pattern of the moves, then you'll be ready to learn the breathing and the tension, which will come in the next lesson. So that's an introduction to San Chin Kata. Watch this section a few times. It'll really help you uh, reinforce the lessons that are being taught with it. All right, we're gonna go to your Sai now. Grab your Sai because we're working on Bo Sai Kumite. On one of the previous videos, we were working Bo Sai Kumite and we were doing it, uh, just working on the, the defensive applications with the Psi. And uh, we're gonna do that again, and then continue on a little further from uh, where we, we uh, left off last time. So, when you're facing the person with the bow, the person with the Psi calls it off and says, Yasume, Kyutsuke, right? And then the hands come up, and both people say, Bo Psi Kumite, and then go. Now step forward with your right leg, guarding position. When the opponent thrusts in, we're gonna step back, forearm block, and step back again, forearm block. So two forearm blocks are the first moves. Now there's a strike coming out our leg, and we lift up our front leg and block down with the right hand, get the other hand over the head, step back, and switch it, left hands in, and then back to guard. Now the opponent is gonna strike at our head and we're gonna step back and block outside and then step back and block out again. Back to guard. Here comes another set of thrusts. We step back, forearm block and forearm block. And then we're back in guard. Now at this section, the opponent swings at our leg with the bow and we have to jump over it and then strike down with the right hand at the head Left hand at the side, right hand at the side. Close your side up, double punch. They're going to block and twist those arms and give you a kick. And you're gonna go back on the ground, on your back, roll over to your left side, put your left knee up and block with the side, and then step back again, standing and do an outside block with the side. So I think this is where we left off on the last video. And if you didn't see last week's video, go back to it and you'll uh, be able to get that first section where I covered in more detail. The next section starts here with the guard. The opponent swings the bow at the head and we duck and the bow goes over our head. And then we come back and block their overhead strike, push them off and then come around with double strikes aiming to the temple. So that's a duck, come up and block, swing around, hit to the temple, and then we take a guard. Now the opponent's gonna thrust at us again, but instead of the forearm block this time, we're going to step back and do the hook block. Step back, hook block. So two hook blocks are the next moves. Now opponent strikes at the head, but this time to the front side of the body, block straight across without stepping back, and then with the second one stepping back and blocking to the inside. So those are two strikes coming at the head. Now, the uh, last series 
is blocking and then disarming the person with the bow. So from our guard position, they're going to do a side strike to our right side and we do a side block. They do a side strike to our left side and we do a side block with our left hand. And then we scoop that arm all the way over and lock it. And you're gonna use the outside prong of your side to lock against their bow. Using your right hand, in reality, you'd be hitting their hands to disarm them. But for the kata practice, for safety, we hit the bow, hit the bow two times. Then we can pull the bow out of their hand by stepping back because they're not, they shouldn't be able to hold it after you hit them. And then we take a guard and then another step forward with the guard. So learning the side part will help you when you get to the, know the bow part, because if you know the bow, you know the side, you can put them both together. This uh, kata is using the sai as defensive techniques and offensive techniques. So you're getting a better idea of the sai usage, just like Bobo Kumite teaches you how to use the bow properly. So let's just do this new section that I just went over with you, which is after the jumping series, it's the duck at this point. So here comes a strike towards the head and you duck, and then you come up with an X block. Then you come around to aim to the temple. Take a guard. The opponent now is going to thrust at you, and you're going to step back with a hook block one, hook block two, back to guard. Now the opponent strikes to the front of your face, and you come across your body with this strike and this one. Two blocking moves hitting with the side. And now the last series a right side strike with a side block, a left side strike with the bow to your left side, block, hook around, and hook the bow with the end of the side. It will make more sense when you actually have a bow in front of you. And now hit down on the hand, hand. Of course, at practice, bow, bow. Keep the side pointed at them as you get their bow out of their grip. Come back to a guard, guard. At the end of the kata, close your side, bow, and you're done. So that's both Sai Kumite, or at least the Sai part of it. And in classes, you'll get a chance to do that against the person using the bow. So you'll uh, learn again, both sections of it. Uh, in our next video, we'll do more detail and maybe do it with a partner so you can really see it in action and start to memorize the moves. All right, last part of our class today, Nahanshi Kata. Now, I don't have a partner to help demonstrate the bunkai today, but I'll give you a couple of ideas, things to think about. In the first move of the kata, we step to the side and do a block. And that's good if their opponent's on the side, but even though the kata teaches sideways movement and looking sideways, you don't always have to think of it that way. You can think of it that your opponent is to the side of you when you move. So another way to think of this is if a punch is coming straight at you is to get to the side and block and then grab their arm and give them an elbow. Elbow either to the body or to their arm itself. If you hit somebody's bicep or if you hit their elbow with that strong forearm area, you'll get some damage on their arm. Sometimes a cot is not meant to be taken literally, that the opponent is actually on each side of you, but it's saying that in the kata you want to move so you're on the side of the opponent. So in this case, we're just gonna think of it a little differently. There's that punch coming in and I'm moving to the side to get away. That's still the same position of the kata. I'm blocking it and hooking it at my wrist and then I'm grabbing him and I'm hitting. In the kata, we hit our hand to make a contact point, but for application, we would just do that move directly to their elbow. So that's one of the bunkai of that first move. The bunkai is the meaning of the move, the application of the move. Uh, another one to think about is the uh, move where you're doing the forward block up and down. That comes a little bit later in the kata. We go one, two, three, four. So if an opponent is punching at you, this block covers your body. It could be a mid-level punch or it could be an upper level punch, but either way that block covers that area. The next move is a hammer fist block. 
We're not turning the forearm muscle for this down block, but we're using the hammer fist. This could block another punch. They could be punching once and twice, or they could be punching and then giving you a knee kick coming in close. And on the knee kick, your block would be right on the inside of their knee, just above the, uh, above the knee joint. And there's a nerve center right there. You hit somebody hard enough there and they, their leg will buckle and they won't be able to keep their balance. So there's a block and, a, and a, another blocking strike coming down. And since they're right in front of you at this point, since they're close from that knee strike, there's that elbow hitting their chin. So we block this one, we hit them, and then we bring up that elbow to hit on the chin. And from there, there's a hit coming out. And that could possibly hit the opponent's nose or maybe their throat. If you knock their head back, well, then the throat is a, a, a better target. So one, two, up and hit. All right, so there's some ways to think about those moves. And one more idea that I'll talk to you about today, but we'll show it in more detail in the next uh, video, is uh, the uh, application of what we call avoiding the sweep. We know that when we're in the hanchi stance, we practice this move where we flip the leg up. And that is good in the description of avoiding a sweep if somebody's trying to trip your leg and you pick up your leg to get away from them, that's fine. But another way to think about it is to block the front of your body if an opponent's in front of you and they're kicking at your knee or kicking at your groin, when your leg comes up, you can be blocking their kick with your foot and deflecting their strike coming right in. So you're, you're not using your hands to block in this case, but you're using your foot to block against their move. And one other move that you might have thought about uh, when we've taught classes on foot sweeping is that that move that we call avoiding the sweep could actually be doing a sweep to your opponent. So your foot could have in the middle of the fighting get gotten caught behind the other person's foot. And now you're gonna sweep them out by tripping them and doing that move. So that avoiding the sweep movement can be an actual sweep by itself. So you'll see more of this in action when I have a, a partner for the next video and you'll see how that is actually applied. But at black belt level, you should have a good understanding of the kata movements, how to get power behind it, intensity, focus, proper form, all of that, but also to know the meaning of the moves, the application of the moves, so that you know what they can be used for, for self-defense. So that's our class for today. Sanchen kata, uh, sai in the bosai kumite, and some ideas of the bunkai in the hanchi kata. So, Keep up your good training, come to class, work hard, practice on your own, watch this video a couple of times to get all those fine points, and I will see you soon. Show me a good attention position, and let's do our bow. And at the end of class, the students will say thank you for teaching me, Sensei, and you are done for today. All right, thanks very much, we'll see you again soon.